In our case number two of hypothesis tests of the population mean, we consider a case where small samples are used. Now we recall that when the population is normal, but the population standard deviation is not known, that the t distribution is to be used, especially when the sample size is small. So the key words have been identified. All right, first, sigma has to be unknown, meaning we're, we're going to have to use s instead of uh, population standard deviation sigma. And automatically, that converts this statistic to a t statistic. Now, however, we just learned that if the sample size is large, usually uh, typically uh, larger than 30 observations, then we could just simply go ahead and use z instead of t because z is much easier to apply. But in this case, though, with small samples, we cannot use the z approximation. We have to stay with t for what it's worth. So here's an example. Canon Incorporated has introduced a copying machine that features two-color copying capability in a compact system copier. The average speed of the standard compact system copier is 27 copies per minute. Suppose the company wants to test whether the new copier has the same average speed as its standard copy, uh, compact copier. Now for this we're going to conduct our test at the 5% level. So from this data we find that only 24 observations are used. That's pretty small. Now those observations provide us with uh, a sample mean of 24.6 copies per minute with a standard deviation of 7.4. Okay, we do know that 24.6 is less than 27 copies, which is uh, the standard uh, number of copies for this company right now. But the question is, is 24.6 so statistically significantly smaller than 27 that that uh, we are willing to conclude that the new copier is uh, that the new copier speed is uh, less. So for this, we first formulate our statement of hypothesis. All right. So the null hypothesis is that the number of copies per minute is 27. The alternative is that it is not. So if you look over here, you would see that. Um, the company wishes to test whether the new copier has the same, same average speed. So same is equality. It is either 27, uh, 27 or it is not. Step two, we draw the, the bell curve. Now we're careful not to say draw the normal curve because actually this is a, a curve of the T distribution which although is symmetric and bell shaped is not necessarily the normal curve but we do know that as sample size increases, as the degrees of freedom rise, the t distribution converges to the normal distribution. One key difference between the t distribution and the normal is that the t has thicker tails, not quite as asymptotic as the z distribution. In any event, right here, based on our data and testing at 5% level, we find that the degrees of freedom for this study is 23 because it's n it's n minus 1 so 24 observations minus 1 would give us 23 so with this we look up the critical value of t from our t table so for that you go to your t table and um, the previous table I used um, would give you a direct value for t based on um, two tail. For example, if you read here, it says use the 0.05 column for 95% confidence interval. So 95% confidence is a two tail type of test. So that means for our 24 degrees of freedom, and again, let's confirm what the degrees of freedom is. Actually, for this study, sample size is 24, degrees of freedom is 23. So I apologize for that. So we go back to this, to the t-table for 23 degrees of freedom under 
sorry, under our 0.05, which is this, we find the critical value of t to be 2.0687. Now, and that's what you see identified here approximately. Now though, the table at the uh, back of your book um, gives you tables based on half of the area. And so it uh, gives you critical values based on half of the area. And so because you are testing at the 5% level, when split into two, one half of the tail is 0 0.025. So as a result, the table at the back of some statistics books would give you critical values associated with 0 0.025 in the believing that you are actually testing at the 5% level. So it's actually 5% level split into two. So for 23 degrees of freedom in this column here, I'm sorry, in this column here, we go down to the value of the test statistic and you see it here 2.06866 which is approximately what we have here 2.069 so either way you're good now then so we identify the critical values here in the bell on the bell curve and then compute t which comes out to be 1.59 and as you can see here 1.59 lies in the accept, acceptance region for HO since in this case it is less than 2.069 and lies well between these two limits. Now you can also use this um, website to find p-values associated with t. So if you were to go to this website and uh, put in the critical value of t um, you'd find uh, this p-value. So let's go there. we we'll click on it and wait for it for just a little bit. Okay, so for this study, we remember, let's minimize this, all right. So we remember that our degrees of freedom is 23. So here we uh, type in the calculated value of t for our study which as you see is I go here is 1.59 so we type in 1.59 for degrees of freedom we type in 23 and then we calculate and it says for two tail it's 0.125 for one tail it is 0 0.0627 and look again we are carrying out a two-tail test so because it's a two-tail test this is our value right here right 0.1255 approximately so because 0.1255 is greater than the 5% level of significance that we are testing with we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So you could say you accept HO, although it's better to say you cannot reject the null hypothesis. All right, so the conclusion here is that there is no evidence that the average speed is different from 27 copies per minute. So in the final stop here, we're gonna conduct a large sample test for the population proportion P.